You mentioned the, the erotic as an antidote to death. What is eroticism and can you uh, explain what you mean by it being an antidote to death? Yes, yes. Animals have sex and we have the erotic. And the erotic is sexuality that is transformed by our human imagination. The erotic is the meaning that you attribute to sexuality. It's the poetics of sex. It's not nature, instinct, primary force. It's everything that gives it a meaning and in a context. It's everything that turns sex not into an act, but into a place you go, not just something you do, but a place that you go. And that place that you go is a place where you connect with vibrancy, with aliveness, with renewal, with life force, with vitality, with mystery. And that's why it becomes an antidote. That's why people often talk about it in spiritual terms, in religious terms. It has a transcending quality to it. It's really the more mystical meaning of the word erotic. You know, eros, zohar, life force. It's really modernity that narrowed the meaning of, of eroticism to something that is more blatantly sexual rather than life force. But that life force you know, often expressed through the sex takes on a whole other dimension. So for me to understand that I wasn't just working on sexuality, because I'm not interested in what people do, the act, the, you know, you can do sex and feel nothing. Women have done sex and felt dead for centuries. You know, it's really that other side of it. Um, and that you don't have to do much of anything, your own imagination. You know, we are the only ones who can have sex for hours, you know, blissful sex and, and a wonderful connection and, and orgasms and all the like, and never touch anybody just because we can imagine it. And that imagination is ability to transport ourselves outside of this moment that we are in into something completely different. That is the erotic elan. And I am very interested in that because, because I work with people who come and complain about the loss of desire and the loss of that energy. And they want to reconnect with that force and they don't know why they lose it and they confuse it with arousal and it has not much to do with that. And, you know, when people complain about the listlessness of their sex lives, they sometimes make them want more sex, but they always want better. And that better but when you analyze it with them, it's about that life force, that vitality, that vibrancy, that mystery, that imaginative play, that curiosity. Curiosity is an essential ingredient of the erotic. And that's what they want to reconnect with. And so then that metaphor that I talked before about not dead versus alive, um, survival versus revival, that's, you know, you can survive and have sex and have children, but you may feel dead. Whereas you can, you can have an experience in which you feel utterly alive and you're in your 80s and you do whatever 80-year-old people, 80 year old people do. It doesn't really matter because, because the force transcends the act. And that's, for me, the interest of working on eroticism. I work with people who want to feel alive. <laughs> 